and um, we're going to look at uh, some interesting stuff at first, and and then we'll look at um, some more animation. Here we got all of our crates that we've uh, looked at. Um, relations, relations, animations, uh, some physics. Grease pencil. Grease pencil is what we're going to take a look at a little closer now. Now, um, I'm going to, uh, I guess I could leave the cube there. I'm going to view it from the top. So I do a view top. You can do seven on num number pad. And we're going to choose a grease pencil. Once you choose the grease pencil option, there's a draw button. And the, but the draw button allows you to draw on the screen. So if you hold down your mouse, it allows you to draw a pattern. Everybody get something drawn? Okay. Now there's a tools if you go down. And if you click that convert to G, that's a geometric. Uh, so you um, you can then choose a path, uh, Bezier curve, uh, polygon curve. But if I choose path, doesn't look like it actually did anything, does it? But if I scroll up and there's a delete frame, if you delete that, it deletes your um, your grease pencil, and you're left with this um, this right here. You can do a G for grab. You can move it around. Where did you go? I can't find it. Um, uh, convert to what? Oh, the this down here, the where it says tools. Convert the active grease pencil to a new curve object. G. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Click that one. Path? And then I chose uh, I chose a path. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go into um, edit mode, it's kind of a it's kind of a nightmare. You have to really zoom in. To see it, it's not as bad as it could be, but each one of these um, is a point I can grab. So I could right click on this uh, this point here, this vertex. I could do a G for grab, and I can move it out. Do a G for grab there and move it out. Now I notice the arrows. For a path, uh, besides having what looks like vertices, um, it has a direction associated with it. Uh, we'll be going a little bit uh, further with this where we'll actually uh, attach a, an object to a path and ha an object will follow the path. Although it takes would take a lot of um, playing, um, let me show you show you an example. Did we get the a path created? Okay. If I did a file new, re reload, get rid of all that junk. If I do an A uh, twice if necessary, to select everything and delete. I'll go ahead and just delete everything. And then I did a did a view top or the numpad seven. If I um, again choose grease pencil here, choose draw, uh, I got to convert it first. I was hoping 
Uh, let's see if I can do my cursive. Let's try it again. Draw. <laughs> it's been so long, I don't know how to do cursive. That's sad. This isn't cursive, you're supposed to, be able to do it all at once. Let me try it again. So how in the world do you do a D so that it continues? Or is your first letter of your name doesn't apply to that? No. Whenever I do a D, I just connect the Y. Oh, you don't? Okay. Like I say, it's been 40 years since I've learn cursive um i can write my name okay so we got that and also i'll write check so i can write a lot of the stuff too now i can convert that if i do a convert and then choose path now again it never looks like it does anything you have to come up here and delete the frame to get rid of the uh the grease pencil layers then you got uh your name here so we could have an object sit there and trace your name. So you could like have a sphere go along your name. Mine only does like one line. Yours only does one line? Yeah, like how all yours is red. Uh-huh. I'll set to click something after you shoot the bat. It's hard to write with the mouse. Um. Well, that is strange. When you delete the frame, what does it do? Uh, where's that? Oh, you scroll up. Oh, there. Yes, best. I can find. Well, that's. Right, well, you can't hardly see that orange, can you? No. It's the light. Let me show one, try to shut one of the lights off. It's more like that light from the outside. Oh, it's from the outside? Uh -huh. Yeah. I watched one tutorial and um, just to refresh my memory on this, and the guy didn't know what he was doing. I'm not sure why he created a tutorial. Um, but what he was saying is that after you get it created, like he did a, let me show you. Uh, let's see, A to select everything, X for delete, view top. And he went through grease pencil, draw. And he drew a star or something like that. Um, and then you you convert uh, to a path, for example. And then he said you need to go in under the erase and sit here and erase all this. <laughs> I'm sitting there, wait a minute. I remember that you didn't have to do that. Um, geez, how tedious would that be? Yeah, very. But that erase feature does work. Um, and where that's really used at is not what he was saying. Where that's used at is if you're doing a draw and you're trying to come up with some fantastic picture here and uh, you didn't like some of it. You can come back and get rid of part of it like that. Um, by the way, everybody good with a grease pencil and so forth? Yeah. Now, um, if you do an N, N brings up a lot of um, interesting features depending upon what you're working on. And um, color for tint and stroke colors, um, thickness. So if you want to change the thickness of that, um, I'm not sure what onion skinning is. Uh, grease pencil colors. So if you don't want to use black, you want to use something else. No, I don't think I saw any other option besides black. Oh, there it goes. 
<laughs> you just have to click somewhere. So you could have orange or or so forth. Um, in always provides a lot of other um, features. I'll, I almost think that it should be called like in for nice features um, because it just brings up some neat stuff. Okay, so we learned how to create a path. You select all those, delete that. Let me do a seven on my number pad for top. Now notice if I just do an in now, it isn't geared directly to um, the grease pencil. It's also got these down here at the bottom. I mean, the grease pencil is still up here at the top. Right there, but uh, we also got uh, these items here. See, there's a background image. And I got my little cheat sheet here for what the code, the key sequences are for some to work with some of this. <clears throat> and we'll get we'll get there eventually. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do a file new, reload, and um, I want to have a path that my animation is going to follow. So we're going to take a look at how to do that now. So um, to begin with, I'm going to do an A twice to select everything, do an X for delete, and then I'm going to do 7 for a view from the top. Now if we click Add, and we'll drop on, um, maybe it's, uh, where is it at? Oh, there it is. Um, curve, and then there's a path. Put a nice uh, orange line, which you probably can't see through that uh, screen. Uh, can you see that? Uh, didn't feel like it's not did anything too exciting. If you go into edit, you do your tab. You see your arrows, and again that tells you the direction. So it's starting over here at the far left. And then it goes to the far right. Now you can right click on those orange uh, dots you see there and do a G for grab. And you can move it up. You can also do it along a certain axis. If you do G and then Y, then you're making sure that when you pull it up, that it's only moving along that particular axis. Now, um, in theory, if you're viewing it from the top, you shouldn't be pushing it down anyway or pushing it up. Now, if I grab uh, this one and I do a GY, like that, but even more than that, you can simply grab it and do a G and move it in whatever, whatever uh, pattern you want. Now, the little black um, curve there, that's what's actually happening. These are just control points that we're, we're working with here. Now, if I highlight, if I have this one selected and I hold down my shift key and I, I click uh, this one down here and this gets highlighted, if I do a W for subdivide and choose subdivide, then I have more control points. And so I can grab that one, do a G for grab, maybe get more of a better look what I want. Grab those, do a W for subdivide. Grab that middle one, do a G for grab, move it down like that. Everybody change their path in some, some manner. Okay. Now your goal, again, is, as always, is you want as few of these control points as possible. Um, because if you got a thousand, if you have to change the cane kind of changes at all, it becomes a nightmare. Now, if I do an A to unselect everything, if I do a B for border select and drag and drop, you can uh, select more than one of those control points. So you can use your selection criteria on these. So even if you did have a thousand, you could still rapidly select a. Uh, Huge amount of them. Okay, now it just did. That's enough. 
Now, you're, uh, what I oftentimes will screw up is I won't have my cursor up in the main uh, window here. Like if I'm down here in my timeline and I do W, it doesn't do anything. Like I have to be selecting one of the points, right? Um, yes. Yeah, you have to have at least two selected. I think if you just have one selected, I don't think W does anything. Uh, maybe I'm lying. Because if you have two selected, when you subdivide it, it'll put one in exactly in the middle. Unless you do some of these other options. Um, there's a lot of different different items here. Now, you see you can even switch direction here, right? Yeah. So if you create a path in, in your animation, you don't want it to go the other direction? No, that's, that's how you do it. Okay. Now I'm going to go uh, do a tab to go to object mode. And here's my, here's my path, my control points uh, created. I'm going to uh, put my 3D cursor over here, and then I'm going to um, do a A to unselect, and I'll do a create, and I'll choose a uh, cube. Boy, that's kind of big. I'll come out here, do an S for scale, bring it down. Now, i got my cube selected. If I hold down my shift key and I right-click the path, I now have my cube selected and my path. I have a hard time getting this order right. Like I'll select the path first and then the cube. That doesn't work. You have to select the cube first and then what you want it to follow. Then you do a control P. And then there's a follow path. So if you choose follow path, this will not always give you what you want. Um, so sometimes you have to play with it. There's one I was playing with earlier. It's just like, oh, this isn't going anywhere. I just started out over. <laughs> so it does weird things sometimes. If you do Alt A, you see your cube is following that path, isn't it? And if I move it over here, looks like it stops about right here. So let me, um, me come to where it ends the path, which is about right there. I'll do E for end. Now you have to do the E while you're on the timeline. And now if you do uh, um, your Alt A, you'll see your animation. Okay, that doesn't look, that doesn't look too bad, does it? You know, it's kind of going smooth along it. I told you uh, the other day, I'm not very good at the grease pencil. Let's go do the grease pencil, and I'll try to have it follow it. And you're going to see what I mean, because I'm, I'm just not good at it. Okay, so I'm going to do an A to, twice to select everything. I'll do an X for delete. I'm going to do a 7 for view from top. And um, I'm going to click in the middle, put my 3D cursor there. And, um, well, it doesn't matter for grease pencil, what am I talking about? Okay. So I got uh, everything set up there. Under the grease pencil, I'll go to the draw. And I'm going to try to draw uh, some kind of shape. That right there, more or less. Now, I have to get that drawn, then I'm going to come down to convert. Um, and choose path. Now, um, remember, we want to delete that grease grease that's on our screen now. So I come up here and click delete frame. And we got our path here. If I go into edit, if I do a tab, you probably have to really scroll in with your mouse wheel. I can't even see it. Okay, so now I want to um, go back to uh, object mode. I want to do an A to unselect that. I'm going to click over here and I'll put in my cube. So I'll do an add or create cube. I'm going to do an S for scale.
And now I'm gonna, I got my cube selected. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and I'm gonna select that path there. And I'll do a control P and I'll have it follow, follow path. Now, if you did an Alt-A at this point, of course, I have E. I, I did an E on that. So let me come over here, clear this, and do an E. Now let me do an Alt-A. See, it goes around that. But do you see an issue? I see an issue. It's like, where in the world did our cube go? Am I like, whenever I play it, it like becomes like really big. It's like inside the cube. Like it's going around the path. Like on the camera, like the angle. It's like inside the cube. Inside the cube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me uh, delete that. And uh, let's see, Control Z, Control Z, get rid of, okay, there's my cube. Like, I made it smaller, and then, like, if I zoom out, it's huge. So let me try to attach it from inside so, there. So at first, like, whenever I stop it, it's small. And then, like, if I go on the timeline, and, like, not starting it, uh -huh. it would be just, like, a really big cube. That's interesting. I think it's because the path is so, so many places in it. Because when you do a regular path, you don't have that problem, do you? Like I say, I'm not very good at the grease pencil. Does it need like a place to start? Like not connecting each other? Well, see, I can't even see my arrows to see which direction is going when I go into edit. I did uh, manage to create one of these earlier. I did a UV sphere, and I attached it, and I had a little bit better luck. Well, obviously not now. Okay, let me create something a little simpler. I'm going to do a file new to start over. Um, a, just select everything. X for delete. Okay, 7 for the top. And um, I'm going to do a grease pencil. I'll draw, I'll just make a straight line. Okay, so then I'm going to convert to geometry, choose a path. I'm going to delete that frame, get rid of the grease. Got this right here. So um, click down here or do an A, unselect. Then I'm going to click down there and I'll choose my crate and drop on a plane. I hold down my shift key and attach it to that. Do a control P, follow path, and uh, didn't disappear that time. Mine disappeared. Did it? Yeah. Of course, it threw it so far back that. Um, whenever I play it, it's there. But whenever I do uh, control P and it says follow path, it just disappears. Like it, like it comes like a little smaller. Or something. I zoom out, then I can't see it. There it is. I don't know if I got the path selected or not. I might not be doing anything here.
<laughs> I don't think I'm doing anything. Not now, because I, I screwed it up so bad that it's not even funny. I wonder if it's actually moving. I don't think it's moving it. See, if I do an in, that tells you your location of what you got selected. So let me um, let me choose that. So I'm going to delete everything here. Do an X for delete. Do a 7 for top. I'm going to create my grease pencil. Choose a draw. Draw a straight line. Can't be any simpler than that. Okay, then I'm going to apply it. Choose a path. I'll delete the frame. Uh, click over here. I'll choose create. Cube. And um, then you see over here, the location is not too bad. So I hold down that, do a control P, follow path. Notice where the is pointing to. It's pointing to the other side, isn't it? So I'm going to move it over here. Location is not crazy. Alt A. Yep, that's what I did to me. Just keep on really big. If you zoom out, you'll see it. But like, you'll see it moving. How strange. Okay, so I'll shrink that way down again. Move it down there, Alt A. <laughs> Going slow. S for scale, shrink that down. Do a G, move it a little closer to that. That's not too bad. Like I say, I, I can sometimes get it if I um, play with it and shrink it and so forth. Part of the issue is that we deleted our camera, didn't we? So if we were creating a you know an animation, we'd want our camera there to accurate, adequately follow it. And um, if your path is coming close to you, where you're currently viewed from the viewpoint, what's it going to do? It becomes larger, or becomes real small, right? Um, now the offset seems to be a skew on the on the when I use the that uh, tool. Okay, so I'm looking at this from this direction. Alt A. So I'd probably want to start it here. So I do S. Was it S for start? What is, how do you do this? Playback, uh, frame, S to start frame. Okay, so we do S for start frame. I get over, uh, maybe I have one. Maybe I want to start there. S for start there. Here for E. All day. <clears throat> but it's just not smooth, is it? No. You know, it's got that little jer jerkiness, you know, that comes from me doing the grease pencil. And I was trying to draw a fairly straight line that time, too. <clears throat> Are we good with that? Much as you can be for a grease pencil? So I'm going to do a new, reload that, and then I'm going to, um, I'm 
I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to do an A uh, to delete, layer, delete everything. Do an X. 7 for view top. Now I want to drop something real simple on there. <clears throat> like a plane. So I drop plane on there. Now I'm viewing it from the top, so I don't got the three dimensions. If I go into tab, to go into edit, um, I can come here and I can grab some of these vertices. Grab that one there and I'll press X for delete. Delete that. I can grab this vertex and do an X for delete. So now we just got two vertices on there. Now if you select one of them, you right click on it and then you do E for extrude. E for extrude again, and E for extrude again. And then E for extrude one more time, and that's probably good enough. We have some kind of some kind of shape, right? Yeah. Now, if you if you do a tab, this is what it created. This uh this bizarre looking shape here. And um we have this uh currently selected. If you do Alt C, you see how there's a, a creating a curve from mesh text. C. So now we have this. I'm going to click somewhere here. I'm going to do an A to unselect that, and I'll choose cube. I'll do an S for scale to make it smaller. I'm going to do a G to move it further in here. Hold down that and press my shift key and select the other one. Do my control P and say follow path. And now if I do alt A, you notice does my cube become really big, really small, go out there a million miles away where I can't even grab it? No. I don't have much luck with the grease pencil. You know, I can have it follow every other path uh, I can create. I just can't have it follow that. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. Every tutorial I'll look at, though, they know less than I do about the grease pencil. Um, so. Now, this gives you a total control when you do this. So you can, with that E for extrude, you can draw whatever shape, whatever figure you want, and then when you animate it, it'll follow that. <coughs> you ready to create a, create a path or create a uh, mesh and then convert it to a curve? So I'm going to um, do a um, A twice to select everything, X for delete. There are some other other curves. Uh, the path is uh, that one where you tell it the direction and so forth. There's a uh, NURB circle. Now some of these, and I, I'll just have to play with them to see which ones uh, do follow it. Some of these I don't think your cube will follow, but let's see. And so I'm going to click over here. I'll do an A to unselect that. I'll drop on a cube. I'll reset. I chose a NURB circle, yes. Yeah, is it still on that? Uh huh. Okay. You just can't see it's in black, so. Yeah, I'll be sure. Now I have the cube selected. I hold on my shift key and I select the circle and I do my control P. And you'll be able to see if it, uh, you know, any that don't follow it. Because it won't have the full path. And if, now if I do an Alt A, then it goes around like that. And again, we can um, freeze it where it stops and do an E for end. Like that. So you don't have to sit there and watch a bunch of the animation not doing anything. <clears throat> so it goes around like that. Mm 
Okay, I'm going to do an A, select every, A twice, select everything, X for delete. Um, if I drop on a NURBS curve, um, not very exciting. This looks like a part of a circle. But again, on, on all of these, you have control points. If you do a tab, go and edit, you can come here and you can choose your G for grab and move it. G for grab and move it here. You can select two of them. Do a W for subdivide. Get another control point, right click it, do it for G. So you can get whatever pattern you want. Again, notice the arrows tells you which direction it's going. Okay, so now I'll go back to object. I'm going to A for and select that. I'll click over here. I'll drop on my uh, plane or cube, sorry. S for a scale to make it a lot smaller. I'm going to hold down that and uh, or select that and then uh, hold down my shift key, select the other one, do a control P for parenting and then follow path. And if you do alt A, it follows the path perfectly. Now, if I come back here to the beginning, it's right there. If I grab the cube alone and do a G for grab and move it away, you notice how it creates an offset here. So now if you do a Alt A, it's going to follow the same pattern, but it's going to use that offset. And there's some place, and I can't remember where this is at, there's some place where you can set that offset uh, with numbers. Probably over here somewhere. Um, maybe there isn't. But in for nice. Let's see location, rotation, dimensions. Here's location my 3D cursor. Motion tracking, camera path. Okay, I don't know where the offset is. <clears throat> Everybody good with that part? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do a, um, a twice, select everything, X for delete. Um, now there's a cir actual circle here. So if I choose that, do a G for grab, move it here. Then I do a click over here on the side, do an A for unselect, drop on my cube. Make it smaller, S for scale. Hold down my shift key, select that, do a control P for parent, and follow path. And it follows that. You may say, what's the difference? You know, uh, didn't the NURB circle give us the same thing? If you select uh, this, um, this circle right here and you go into edit, notice where my control points are. My control points are right on the circle. The other one, the control points were like on these bounding, bounding um, shapes. Um, I couldn't tell you which one would give you the more most control. Um, if you took the Illustrator, maybe you might uh, might be able to tell me. I remember this from way back when. Um, some people like ones better than others. Now this here, if you do an R for rotate, doesn't do anything. If you do an S for scale, it doesn't do anything. The only thing you can do is G for grab. If you do want to change the like the rotation, kind of the direction, instead of choosing that middle one, you choose one of these outer ends. And if you grab that and do a G for grab, 
you can change um, more of like the, the angle of the curve, how it goes. Now this will this you can also alter it, but uh, this allows you to alter it just based upon like one side of it. So like I can get it to look like that. Now you see the distance between these arrows here. If I go uh, out of that, if you do an, uh, let me do a G for a grab on that and move it a little bit closer to where it starts. Do Alt A. I can't really tell. Does it look like it went faster in part of it? Yeah. Does it? Okay. <laughs> Your eyes are better than mine. The idea is, though, that, you know, those distance between those arrows helps determine the, the speed of it. I'm about to show the Bezier curve. That's, um, again, just the idea where you have the the, the middle control point, and then you have the two outer ones where you can like move it like a like a stick or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna do a file new reload startup, and um, I'll do a seven for view from top, and um, I'm gonna delete everything. So I'll do an A, and then delete. Now, um, let's see, in. You see there's a background image down here. So if I, if I expand that, there's an add image, which then expands this, which then you click open. And if I go to pictures, and I choose one of the pictures, like the Pink Panther. It doesn't change anything, does it? Um, let's see. If you do in one five on your keypad, so uh, the in shuts at uh, the in just shuts at the uh, on and off. The um, one five um, that sets our view and also sets it to. Um, is it orthogonal? I think it sets it to. Um, but we can see our background image. You can zoom in. You can hold down your shift key. You can move it down. Like that. Now hold down your mouse wheel and just move it a little bit. Disappears, doesn't it? To get it back, if you go back to... Um, let's try that again one of my um, numpad. Now five uh, changes it. Now you see that right there? Look at look at the squares at the bottom on your screen, I guess, not on mine, because you probably can't see it. It looks like it's going off in a distance, doesn't it? Um, versus if you do five, that means everything's a distance. This is, um, this is how you look off in the distance. I look at that house over there. That house is about half an inch tall. Is it really half an inch tall? No. The fact that it, as you go off in a distance, it looks proportional where it's, it's going off and getting, things are getting smaller, right? That's what gives us the 3D effect. So that what that does, that shuts it on and off. So there it looks like it's going off in a distance. And here is just kind of up front like that. Okay. Well, what's the benefit of this? Well, if I click create, and I'm gonna drop on a um, a plane, you may not be able to see anything, but if I rotate, you'll see it. Um, if I go into edit, if I um, delete all my vertices except for one. And I'm going to put it exactly in the middle. So I do a G for grab and throw it in the middle, more or less. Now if I do 7, 
Do you see uh, the little white dot on your screen? That's your one existing vertex. You deleted every other one. If I hold down my shift key, move that down. If I do a G for grab, I can come up here. What are you moving down? The what? What are you moving down? You said you were moving down shift key. You're moving down. Um, oh, uh, to move the, the – I hold down my shift key, and I use my mouse – held down my mouse wheel, and you can move it up and down like that. Now I have this selected now. If I do an E for extrude, then I can create another vertex and I start moving my mouse, do another E for extrude. And what I'm doing is I'm tracing around that image. I don't really have the patience for this. But somebody who's into modeling, you know, like if you had somebody working at a game development house, developing 3D models, or somebody working at like a Pixar type place, um, the idea is to create a model with as few vertices as possible. I could sit here and click it. Over and over, putting them just real close to each other. But again, that's that's not your goal. I suppose a person could master the grease pencil. After you bring your picture up, if you got a steady hand. You can go around. How do you make it uh, rotate like that or something? Like around like his ear? Oh, I'm doing a G for grab. Yeah. Or oh, wait a minute. No, I'm doing E for extrude. Sorry. Yeah. I'm doing E for extrude and I'm just moving my mouse to my new location. It's going around, is it? It looks like it's uh, doing a curve. No. No, I, you can't. You can't see it real well on here, but they're, they're straight lines. The what? Can you see the straight lines? Yeah. Now, if I get to my last one, if I hold down my um, my shift key, I can select that, and I can do an F for face, and that'll finish the finish faces. Now, it'll pro it'd probably fail if I tried to create the, all the faces in between it. I'm just guessing. But if I did an A for selecting all those, and I did F, I lie. And it created the mesh here. Um, so then I can apply a texture to it, and all of a sudden I have the beginnings of a model. Uh, problem is, I turn it sideways. Oops, let's try it again. <laughs> there we go. The what? Uh huh. Is that what it looks like? <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could. Uh, I never thought about it that way. You could you could create a um, image because you can export out of this thing. You could create an image, uh, you know, with doing different things. Hmm. Not that you can't do that. Can you do that over in Paint? Yeah, if you use layers. You drop an image on one of the layers and you draw on the other one around it. You create your own. Yeah. Now it's it's one it's um not three dimensional though, is it? We're not going to go into that kind of depth in here, but if you were were to do that, you'd have to have a picture of like a character from the front side. side. Yeah, ideally from all directions, but at least from the side. From the front, the side, and the top. But like you say, it'd be ideal if it was from all of them. And from there, you can then do more extruding. And again, uh, the goal is a minimum amount of uh, vertices. I got 40, and that's uh, probably not good. 
Yeah. Um, but there are other options here where you can you can apply these deforms. And I couldn't even tell you which ones um, flatten angles of selected vertices. Did that just make it smoother? Let me click it again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why some of these allow you not to have to get it exactly perfect. And when I'm doing this, it's not increasing the number of vertices. It's still 40. So they provide the tools for that. And I wonder if I went back to view top. Um, by smoothing it, what did I lose, though? Um, yeah. I lost some of that, but it looks a lot better, doesn't it? Um, noise. What in the world does noise do? Nothing. Um, scale, rotate, translate. Reason why I'm showing that is because you could use that then to, um, before you made a mesh. Before I created all those faces, you can have your cube follow it. You can con convert that to a curve by doing Alt C, and then it would uh, follow that. So you follow whatever shape you draw, and it actually follows it halfway decent. I don't know if I can do a Control Z enough to get back to point before I threw the faces on there, uh, right there. Okay, so go into object mode. I'm going to do an Alt C curve from mesh text. I'm going to do an A to unselect. I'll click here. I'm going to drop my cube on. Resize that. I hold down my shift key, select that, do a control P to parent. Follow path. <laughs> and it follows my pink panther face. Be a lot smoother. Uh, G, oops. G, uh, looks like it starts about right there. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, having that offset really messes it up. And that's what the grease pencil would be great if I could figure out how, how for it not to mess up the offset. Now, one other thing I want to show you that really has nothing to do with the animation, but I think it's just cool. Is I have this set, and I got my um, transform tools here. I go on to edit. And you see there's tools down here for, like, spin. Now, I currently have eight vertices. And if I click spin, I now have 80, vert or 8 of 80, yeah. So I got 80 uh, possible ones. Click spin again, you get this. Spin again, and then you start rotating it. Yeah. So you can create, and then if you do a tab to go out of there, out of the edit. Now I've just created 224 vertices though. But yeah, it creates a, like a gear. You can create some really neat, neat effects with it. If I do a control Z to undo that, back to the cube. And again, I have to go and edit. I keep forgetting to do that when I look for those tools. Then create. Wait a minute, not create tools. Yeah, do I have that selected? I don't have an edit. How many times am I gonna not do that? There's a the screw is pretty pretty interesting. If select a string of connected vertices, don't I have those connected? Uh, doesn't like the cube. Uh, how about uh, cylinder? And uh, tools. 
Maybe I got too many. Yeah, obviously I'm not gonna show that to you. <laughs> I guess a spin is the only thing I'll show you on that. It creates a effect where you can create a like a um Let me try one more thing. Z A B Hmm. I'll, have to, I'll have to do some research to remember which tool you can apply it on. But we're trying to create, uh, well, what's the screw look like? It goes round and round, right? What if I got a, if I had a circle? So I would, uh, X, vertices, create circle. And, uh, see, I'm in the edit. Yeah, I don't remember. I have to play with that. Now, what I want you to do for the, today's uh, uh, project is to create two um, two animations. Um, one of them using uh, where you bring in an image and you draw a a path around it. First, you draw you know the vertices around it, and then you create a path uh, create a path. And then the uh, the other one, I want you to um, then choose one of the um, one of the curves and have it go over something. So put put like a obstruction in the middle and have it go over it. Yeah. Like, okay. it's, what, it's like a bridge, basically. Yeah, yeah. Or you could even like um, if I wanted to put a torus on here. See, this would probably be a good example. Fairly easy. If I dropped on a torus and I did an RX like this, and if I clicked up here, then A, choose another torus, RX, did an S for scale or something like that. If you want to animate, I could cube flying through those. You could do it with some kind of some kind of path. Okay. So path right. Just to just to show that you're using animation, not just blindly following a path, but actually accomplish some some purpose. Okay. And I'll go ahead and put drop boxes out there. Can you show me how to uh, go ahead and finish your again? Oh yeah. Um, we do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean all that junk off. Um, you do a, uh, let's see, i got my keystrokes here. <laughs> um, do our in to bring up our background image. Down here, you do um, expand background image. It's clear at the bottom. Choose add image. Choose the open. And I'll choose my pictures because that's my re recent. Choose an image. Doesn't do anything. And here's where my cheat, cheat sheet is. You do one and five on your number pad. So one and then five. And then you can bring in whatever image you want. Now the end doesn't have anything to do with that. The end just allowed us to choose the image. The one and five is what, um, I don't even know what they do. Let's see, what do they do? One is front and five is uh, orthogonal, I think. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, five changes from perspective to orthogonal. So um, when you do the five, it changes it to orthogonal. Do you need me to write any of these? Uh, 
cheats on the board? No. Okay. <laughs> you got a good memory. It took a. I had to write those down. Remember the control P. And 